Uh, we have been talking about the encryption, decryption, uh, especially like in a PGP encryption, how do you generate the keys? Uh, what is the right set of algorithm that you should be using when you're generating the keys? How do you send received data uh, like an encrypted? Uh, what is the anonymity? Uh, how to achieve maximum privacy and etc. Now, after learning all of this, uh, it's it's really worth for us to like you know look at the real world application, real world example, which is obviously the greatest example in uh, like in the in in current generation we have is the cryptocurrency, which has evolved a lot. So in this uh, particular like you know series, we are we are going to ch uh, like learn about the blockchain. Uh, how does it work in the back? How, how does it encrypt and decrypt all the data, transactions, etc.? So we are not going to learn about the platform. How do you, how do you send or receive the Bitcoin? But I want to teach you about how this encryption that we have learned so far are actually being used in the blockchain technology. And then we'll also go into much detail on on how do you like you know store and etc. Now, uh, before we go there, uh, we we must talk about what is the banking system uh, and and why do why do we need the cryptocurrency? So uh, first thing first is banking system is very centralized. Uh, and when I say centralized, it means like you know uh, everything, uh, all the data uh, is with one entity, and uh, that entity is like you know uh, have have control on on all of your assets and etc. and has all the visibility. That means it is not private uh, because your data could be like you know accessible by all the employees. Uh, there are various threats. Like if you do the threat model on the banking system, you would understand that employee has access to all of your data, and of course they follow certain rules and regulations. But still, uh, they they know exactly uh, where the money is coming from, where the money you are spending, and and like you know what your savings and etc suppose given this like you know this the, uh, all the information are in the bank and it is not private uh, and it's centralized hackers we have seen various various uh, attacks in the past where hackers are managed to get uh, like you know access to some of the banking transactions and systems and of course like you know a lot of data gets breached and and compromised and sometimes bank also has to uh, due to compliance they also have to share this information with the different ag agencies and that agency also obviously is a threat actor uh, if there is a malicious uh, person in the agency can also uh, like you know misuse some of this data so there are there are some disadvantages and that that's why uh, the cryptocurrency was uh, invented or, or maybe like you know uh, someone introduced to us now what is cryptocurrency and, and why why it is so popular so of course it is not controlled by an entity like there is no government or there is no private entity which would say uh, we own the cryptocurrency so there is no centralization it is peer to peer so if i want to send uh, money to you i can directly transact with you it just removes middleman it removes all the transactions and service fees and etc so it becomes very easier uh, like you know to transact rather than going through the banking system and then of course for that it uses the blockchain technology so now let's understand how that works in the real world. So suppose uh, there is a person who wants to, like you know, send a money to someone else. Uh, and and when we say money, we in this in this session we will mean like cryptocurrency. Uh, so then what what they will do? There is a crypto wallet uh, similar to our regular wallet. We will have crypto wallet, but with the crypto wallet there will be two keys attached to it. And these are the keys which we generated or like, you know, we, we seen in one of the previous video uh, with the PGP encryption. So there will be a public key and there is a private key. Now, why do we need both the keys? So let me explain that. Uh, first of all, uh, let's say the person, uh, Tom, uh, wants to send one coin to Harry. So what it will do is it will, uh, it will create a block, uh, transfer one coin from Tom to Harry. And then this will be signed with the Tom's private key. So when it is signed with the private key, what it will do is it will also attach its public key in that block. So now when Harry receives uh, this like in a block, it will see that it's actually signed because private key and public key is arith arithmetically somehow connected. Uh, so when the Harry, when Harry receives this block or coin, he, he can uh, use the public key 
to verify whether the sign was actually by Tom or someone else, whether the request was from Tom or someone else, right? So this is why uh, we use the public key and private key in this uh, particular fashion. But now, how do we how do we use the or where do we use the blockchain? So blockchain is used. So suppose, uh, like you know, when I said earlier, it's a peer-to-peer -peer network. So you have a large network, and in that large network, there are multiple, uh, like you know, individuals like you and me, uh, are are sitting and and like you know, mining. Uh, I'm sure you you must have heard this uh, word a lot, like mining, Bitcoin mining, right, or or, or currency mining. So and and all of these people. Uh, have like you know information on this block so for example if I am sending uh, like Tom is sending uh, coin to Harry then then that block gets populated and then this block is stored in a ledger uh, we would call it as like you know public ledger and it will be stored on all the network so whoever is in the bit, uh, blockchain network uh, and whoever are mining uh, all, all of them will have this tracking of the transactions and this is what we call like you know mining and and of course by mining they get like a little bit of incentive uh, uh, like just how how like you know bank charges the fees but the miners get incentive uh, by mining and keeping uh, this ledger and they have copy of the blockchain so each of uh, these miners will have the copy of this uh, transaction so it's it's not a, it's not centralized right so everyone has access to everything but now there is a there is a really good question on how is this like you know blocks are are captured and then how how do you store it and and how do you, how does it get replicated so let me show you that as well but before we talk about that let me uh, talk about our today's sponsor um, uh, because we are talking about like you know privacy and anonymity uh, VPN provides the best uh, privacy and anonymity. Uh, of course, uh, our today's sponsor is Atlas VPN, and and they are uh, one of the like you know kind of VPN. I think I, I like you know I've liked it uh, so far the best. And the reason is uh, that the tool is such so simple to set up, but also it is security focused. Like it, it not just like you know for the VPN purpose, but it provide multiple benefits. So, for example, like you know, it was it was it was developed by the cyber security specialist. It was created by a group of IT engineers. So they they have built this product, keeping in mind that how what what do the user need to stay secure on this uh, World Wide Web. So they have they have created like features uh, like you know keeping that in mind. Uh, currently, they are running a very very good deal. Like uh, you can get for uh, a month, I think dollar and eighty three cents per month, and you can also get three months extra with thirty day money back guarantee if you use like you know the coupon code I have linked in the description below. Uh, the good thing is, of course, like you know, uh, I sometimes like to watch shows which are not available uh, in my country. So, uh, and if you want to do that, uh, you can. You want to switch, like you know, you have to pretend to be your traffic is coming from a different country, and this VPN, uh, of course, provides that value as well. So, if you want to switch over to some Netflix shows which is only available to some Europe region, you can easily do that. Uh, you can also obviously be anonymous while you are searching on anything on Google. You you can hide your activities and stuff like that. So that's that's totally cool. Uh, it is also like you know stops all the ads and malware. Uh, just imagine how many ads and malware that you deal with uh, when you are browsing on the web. So it also controls. It will also detect some of the malware who are trying to steal your data, and it will prevent uh, all of that. Uh, while you're browsing and then you can sometime also you get the deals on like you know when you're browsing on airline and hotels you get uh, coins and you can get a best deal some discounts as well so that's also an added benefit and top of all you just need one subscription so for example like for dollar and 83 cents per month you can protect all of your devices so for example i have android ios phone i have two laptops uh, like you know windows and mac second product all of that with just one subscription that's a heck of a deal so yeah grab this big deal uh, because right now the premium is as i said like dollar 83 cents plus three month extra uh, you get 30 day money back guarantee uh, you can get all the benefits which i just mentioned 
just check it out sign up once uh, I, I like you know I, I I'm sure you would like it so once you try it out uh, uh, and if you have any questions their support is pretty great to uh, them out all right let's go back to our video so uh, now we talked about the miners now let's talk about the blockchain in specific so blockchain as I said it's a public ledger right uh, now also when I when I'm talking about this blockchain you should also be thinking about the threat model like what are the risk is blockchain really really secure or are there any threats to it we'll talk that in just a little bit and then this public ledger has records of all the transaction now how is it stack up so suppose this is a public ledger right uh, we call call it as a decentralized ledger and there are people who are keeping this uh, this like in a block of data and imagine uh, blue is the top record so like you know most recent record where Tom transfer one coin to Harry then there is a, a next block or next row where, where like you know uh, Tom transfer two coins to Jerry uh, and then there is another record so likewise there are blocks of record and all of this all these blocks are kept at everyone's uh, in everyone's ledger so everyone has copy of it now you must be thinking okay if if this is like you know if the name appears on the blocks then it defeats the purpose of privacy and anonymity yes so that is not true uh, this is just for the illustration purpose so uh, in the real world it does not show like you know the the actual name of the people who are involved in the transaction it stays really private so how it works instead of uh, like you know names it will have like you know your your address your wallet address so you will actually be able to see and and i'm sure this address is really long and uh, it you cannot guess it so yeah this will have all the address and of course uh, if you want to be anonymous there are multiple tricks I'm gonna show you as well so of course we we know about the pros now what are the threats threats are these ledgers are public so even though you are not exposing your identity your names but someone can still be able to figure out for example let's say my address is ASDFE how many transactions have been made from this particular address and to where and also someone can figure out from where uh, like you know I have received the money to this address of course there is no uh, I guess real match from the address uh, like you know from this number to my name exactly but that information can still be retrieved uh, suppose like you know uh, if somehow someone able to figure out my my wallet ID or address then of course you, and if you have the ledger then you can figure out okay this person has made this much transaction uh, they can also know about the balance and everything now to avoid this or to control this particular threat what you can do is you can create more than one address uh, of course using your fake identity so even though let's say uh, you are you are rotating uh, your addresses when you are doing all of these transactions and on top you are also using your fake identity so even though someone is able to figure out that this address is tied with this particular person the your real identity still re remains secure so this is like you know high level understanding on what the blockchain is and and how it works uh, in in like you know uh, from a from a thousand foot view uh, I'm sure you must have many questions uh, based on this so uh, but yeah the key concept here is uh, public key which is always used to verify that the block was signed by the sender or, or like you know whoever is sending the money so yeah that verification is always uh, like digital signature right so that's how they verify but yeah I'm sure you must have many questions so feel free to jog it down into the comment section below I'll try my best to answer them uh, if you have any other questions uh, please let me know any ideas on what kind of topics you guys are looking for also do send me that uh, that that would be great and thank you so much i'll see you guys next time bye